Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We broadcast live on Mondays from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. My special guest today is Juno Chung. He is the owner of the very popular Koa Pancake House, which has multiple locations across Oahu. It's been an extremely successful family-run business for over 30 years, and today, we are going beyond pancakes. Hey, Juno, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me, Rusty. Well, I'm excited to have you here. I, I know you went to Marino yep. in your youth. How did you like going to Marino? Oh, I loved it. Um, you know, small class sizes, the school is very small. Um, you know, the teachers get to know you beyond just being a student. You know, they, small class sizes is, is huge for me, you know, so it's, it's, you know, there's so much interaction and, yeah, it's, actually, a, actually, it's a great school. Great school. Great school. And what kind of activities and sports did you do there? Um, I didn't do too many um, organized sports. Uh, I paddled in high school. Um, uh, but other than that, you know, I, I did a lot of outside activities like skateboarding, surfing. Um, but paddling was my main sport in, in, in high school. All the fun stuff. And, yep. and you could do that anytime you wanted to, right? Yep, 100%. And then what college did you end up going to? I went to Chaminade University. Um, and there I got my business admin degree. Um, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. great. Chaminade. Yep, Chaminade. Is, and another small school, right? Um, you're not just a number there. Stu uh, professors know your name. You know, and um, again, small class sizes. Dang. And, yeah. They did good. I mean, you're your owner, CEO of Koa Pancake House now. <laughs> they did something right. <laughs> now, what was your first official job that you had, Juno? Um, it was working at Zippy's um, as a, I was a, a counter, uh, I was taking orders at the register, and I also helped out with the bakery department. Now, why was that? Why did, why did that why did Zippy's become your first job and not with your parents? Um, you know, my parents, actually my first job, I wanted to work as in, in the valet. Oh. Um, I, I was into cars in high school and I wanted to just be around it, but my parents, you know, they, they told me that if I were to work anywhere, it had to either be with the family business or somewhere that would help me gain experience that would help out the family business. So, um, yeah, I mean, I like eating zippies, so <laughs> I, I chose to work at zippies. Who doesn't? I have to zippies like at least once, twice a week. I just had it last night. <laughs> <laughs> but I absolutely love Koa Pancake House through these years. I mean, it's you guys are just awesome. And your parents started Koa Pancake House in 1988? Yep. So how did it all begin? Um, it kind of happened by accident. My parents moved here from Korea, and... Um, they had a bunch of different jobs. Um, they started out being a waiter, a dishwasher, and the first business they owned was a driving school. And they would help immigrants, uh, especially people from Japan and Korea, learn how to drive in the United States. My parents speak both Korean and Japanese. So they helped people get their license, and that was their first um, job that they had. And um, I guess they were just looking through the newspaper and they seen that a business was for sale in 1988 and it was Koa House in Kaneohe and they took a stab at it so then they sold their, their driving school business and then bought Koa Pancake House. Now do you guys actually have some Koa in each location? So that's actually the reason why we're named Koa Pancake House. Um, so the original owner that started Koa House back, this was probably in the early 80s, his main job was importing wood for a living. Um, and he wanted to get into the restaurant business. So he built his first restaurant. And since he had the connection with importing wood, he decided to decorate the whole interior with koa wood, wow. which was very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so he named it Koa House. And uh, when my parents took over in 1988, they just kept with the theme. and. All of our restaurants now, unfortunately, is not decorated with real coal wood. It would be very, very expensive, but we use a coal laminate, so still has that same feel. Sounds good. Now, in 1988, 
you must have been very young. I mean, how, how young were you? And then through those years mm -hmm. with your parents owning Koa Pancake House, what were you doing during those years? Yeah, so I was three when my parents took over and bought Koa Pancake House. Um, yeah, and I was just going to school. Um, but I was pretty much raised in the restaurant. Um, some of the longtime customers say that they remember my mom holding me um, or me being behind the register while my mom was bringing up people. And um, the customers used to joke around and you know, say, does this person have a, a, a worker's permit? Because he's so young, because I would always be in the restaurant. And they would joke around and say that it was child labor. <laughs> now, I want to know, Juno, how, how did it evolve to where you became the owner? Yeah, so um, you know, after my first job at Zippy's, uh, and I worked there for about a year or two, um, after that, I, I went straight into the family business. So, I, I did everything from working as a cashier, cook, um, busboy, everything. And um, over the years, you know, I just worked with them, and it slowly became a thing where I was going to take over. It, I mean, it, it was never a question whether or not I was going to take over. And um, so, you know, I went to college, got my business degree, and then it was, it was just a thing where I was going to start working with my parents right after. And, um, you know, after working with my parents after graduating college, um, we started to butt heads. Okay. You know, um, my parents being the first generation business owner and me being the second, you know, I had different views on how I wanted to run the company. And we started to butt heads, argue all the time. And then I, you know, it got to a point where we were arguing so bad. But, um, you know, so I told my parents, let's, let's just, split ways, you know, you guys run the business, this is your business, and I want to preserve the relationship between father and son and mother and son, uh, rather than, you know, just work together and argue all the time. So yeah. we actually had a fallout at one point, and I think this was in 2000, uh, this was 2012, okay. 2011. And so I parted ways, started my own business, I moved to New York, and then shortly after, uh, I get a call from my sister, and she says my parents' health wasn't doing too well. Um, and I was a lot closer to my parents than my sisters were. So my sister asked me if I could come back home and talk with my parents. And then after some talk, yeah, they, they agreed that, you know, um, they wanted to retire, they wanted to focus on their health. And yeah, I soon took over. So you became owner, and you wanted to be 100% in charge, mm -hmm. which you are, right? Yeah, yes. Now, I want to know, Juno, what, what's your biggest challenges that you're dealing with as a business owner? Ooh, uh, biggest challenges, the biggest one has to be by far employees. Okay. Um, you know, I know a lot of people now talk about employees being the biggest challenge because of the low unemployment rate. But, um, you know, for me, the biggest challenge was when I took over the business, we already had about 110 employees. And for me, I felt a lot of pressure to take care of these employees. Um, and I believe I was 28 at the time when I took over. And I was like, everybody was looking at me like, yeah. OK, what, what, you know, what do we do? Like, and they were asking me all these questions. And I felt very scared to make a decision. I was almost paralyzed because... You know, I knew that with a wrong decision or if I did something within the company, it would affect all 110 employees. Um, you know, so employees is definitely my biggest challenge because I'm always thinking about how it's going to affect them and their livelihood. Yeah, and in my book, you know, I talk about empathy. Mm -hmm. And you definitely have empathy for all of your employees. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure when they watch this uh, TV episode, they're going to fully realize that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, what sets your restaurant apart from others? So in 2001, my father opened up his second Koa Pancake House, which was in Wahiwa. And he decided to go with the fast casual concept. Um, you know, with, with, with today's you know, technology and everything, everything is so instant, right? And, my father wanted to change it from a sit-down restaurant to a fast casual where you order up at the counter, you seat yourself, everything comes on a paper plate and fork and knife, and you just throw it away. And so we changed our business, and we wanted to make it kind of like in between fast food and, and, and a sit-down style restaurant. 
And um, we strive on being a quick breakfast. You know, you don't have to wait for a table. You don't have to wait to get served. You know, and you could get your orders to go if possible. You know, so. Well, I absolutely love that. I, I love how, how great the food is and how casual it is, but it, it's very comfortable. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, how many current locations do you have right now? So we have a total of eight restaurants, uh, six of them being Koa Pancake House. Okay. And we opened up two Koa Cafes that are actually going to be being converted to a Koa Pancake House in the next couple of weeks. Now, what are your current goals right now as a business owner? Um, right now, my current goals are just to kind of create structure within the business. Um, so my parents, when they ran the business, it was a very mom and pop style organization. Um, you know, we had no managers, no handbook. <laughs> Thank God we didn't get sued by anybody. But um, yeah, we had no rules whatsoever in the company and everything was just kind of done. We we're just putting out fires left and right. And so for me, I'm, I'm wanting to put in more and more structure. Um, you know, come up with the benefits package, you know, have a handbook. We have a handbook now. Great. And just hiring more uh, management level um, positions in the company. Now, knowing that, what is your, what is your vision for the future of your company? Uh, that actually changed recently. Um, when I first took over, my vision for the company was to expand and to open up. People would ask me what my, um, my big, hairy, audacious goal was. And I used to say, I want to open up a thousand restaurants. But recently, um, it, it became to more just sustain what we have now. Um, you know, and if we do open up one or two here and there, that would be okay. But um, for me, my vision is to be able to create a sustaining, well-organized, well-running restaurant, and also venture out and do other things. You know, um, I have this other clothing company that I have on the side, and I would like to spend a little bit more time on that. Yeah, and you know, you know, winning a championship or having a successful business be number one, I mean, achieving success is one thing, mm -hmm. but sustaining success is, is really challenging, and that's what you're doing right now. Yeah, um, you know, my father always told me that after I took over the company, he would always tell me it's, you know, you don't have to expand. Just don't bankrupt the business. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the only thing I have to do. What do you think, Juno, are the keys to running a successful business? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I, definitely the people. Um, you know, without the, the employees, you know, we're, we're nothing. Um, so I always focus on making sure that we're taking care of the people um, taking care of my employees and you know any extra money that we have we're actually working on our budget right now and with all the excess money that we have I want to make sure make sure that we're paying our employees well you know we're coming up with with benefits like creative benefits where it's really taking care of my employees so I think yeah that's the number one thing yeah and you know when I come into your restaurant it's it's really great because there's such a positive you know atmosphere in there and the employees are very welcoming and it looks like they're having fun. Yeah, yeah, that's actually one of our core values. Uh, it's fun, you know, I wanna make sure that people come in and they're not so stiff. We don't have like a, you know, welcome to Koa Pancake House or whatnot, and yeah. it's just, hey, how's it, what's it? you know? And, and we wanna make sure that everybody's just having fun while they're working. Yeah, no, yeah. totally, I mean, and, and it's, it all starts because of the owner, oh, right? Thank and you. so it permeates <laughs> through the rest of the staff, and that's great. Now, Juno, why, why do you think restaurants fail? That also is a good question. Um, and if I've known that answer, um, I, don't, I don't think that we would be converting Koa Cafe to a Koa Pancake House. Um, you know, because I thought that I could run um, and start my own business. You know, along with Koa Pancake House, I wanted to kind of do something on my, on my own. And, you know, so I started Koa Cafe, opened up two restaurants, and it wasn't doing so well, so we're actually converting it to a cool pancake house, and hopefully that kind of picks up business a little bit. But if I've known that answer, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I would have saved a lot of money. So, Koa Cafe was your idea. Yep. Yes, and it was. so what what happened when you told your parents about that whole situation? Um, yeah. So I had these meetings with my parents. You know, we we go out to lunch or dinner every now and then, and I remember having this discussion with my dad. And I sat him down and I told him, you know, Koa Cafe, we're losing money every month. I'm looking at the P&L statements and 
we're just constantly losing money. And the whole time I'm telling him this story, he has like this big smile on his face. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, like how is this? He's like laughing at my pain. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and for him, the reason why he was so happy is because he feels that everybody in one point or another should, should fail in life. And um, that's the only way that you're gonna learn from your mistakes. And um, you know, for me, when I, every time I look at this P and L, I would see how much money I'm losing, and I remember, like, I, I felt my like all this anxiety build up. And my father told me to look at it from a different perspective, where he said, you know, when you go to school, you have to pay a tuition, right? I mean, there's, and when you pay this tuition, you're you're, you're paying that so that you can learn. And my father feels the same way in business, where. You know, sometimes you need to pay money to learn a lesson. So he's telling me that you're just paying tuition, and sometimes the, the tuition is like a Harvard MBA tuition, and, <laughs> and sometimes it's a community college tuition. Uh, unfortunately, mine was probably several MBAs from Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely a, a learning experience. Definitely is. Well, Juno, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to continue going way beyond pancakes. OK, cool. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Juno Chung. We'll be back in a quick minute. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests, I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Juno Chung. He is the owner of the very popular Koa Pancake House, which has multiple locations across Oahu, and today we are going beyond pancakes. Juno, I want to know, what's a lesson or lessons you've learned since becoming owner so far? Uh, one definitely has to be, um, you know, being humble. Um, you know, with creating Koa Cafe, I, I, I felt that you know, I could do something better than what my parents has built, have built. And um, yeah, you know, so that's why it was a very humbling experience every time I looked at the, the statements and, and was seeing that we were losing money. Um, and after that, you know, I felt like, who am I to th say that I know better than my parents who's been doing this for about, you know, 25 or so years. Um, so definitely being humble is, is a big one. And there's, there's a, a lot to be said about experience, right? Right. right. So, w what did your parents say tell you about? You know, if I mean, if it isn't broke, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. So my parents, they would always say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And for me, I always felt like, you know, even though it's not broke, it could be better. Um, but you know, sometimes that's not the case. And so, with my parents, when I when I pitched them about, you know, doing something different with the business, they told me. If you're going to do something, do something on your own. So that's why I created Koa Cafe because they didn't want to mess. They didn't want me to mess with whatever they had built, right? And they felt <laughs> like they they tweaked the formula and they got it right. So they're like, why change it, right? Yeah. Because it's working. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys do a lot to help the community. Um, what can you share? Like what you guys are doing? Yeah. In the community. Uh, so every year uh, we do we work with the Make a Wish Foundation and we team up with them. They have this event called Waffles for Wishes, and we donate food and we um, we work the event with them. We also um, donate to IHS, which is a homeless shelter here in Hawaii. And every Thanksgiving, 
uh, the IHS puts on a dinner, and we felt, why not have it an all-day ordeal where people get to come in and enjoy food? So we actually donate uh, pancakes and breakfast to the IHS, IHS shelter and uh, just feed everybody breakfast so that they could you know, enjoy just a whole day of eating. Wow, all day? All day. Wow, yeah. that's, that's so fantastic yeah, to hear really that. Yeah, it's really good. Now, June, I want to talk to you about my book. I know that you read my book. Mm -hmm. Did you like my book? I loved your book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. What did you like about it? You know, there was that story, uh, Chris Ma, I believe his, oh, yeah. his name was, yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, in, that, in that part of the book, you talk about teamwork. And, you know, that's another big core value of, in, in our company. Um, you know, just making sure that everyone works well as a team. And sometimes you need to sacrifice whatever you want that's for the greater good. Yeah, you know? he, was, he was a freshman on my team when he beat everybody and became number one. Uh -huh. And I thought he was going to play first singles. Uh -huh. But I had five singles players. I needed one of them to play doubles. And he's like, coach, I'll, I'll play doubles. And uh -huh. I'm like, really? I told that story to everybody every year. I actually tell that to my, my leadership team as well, too. Every time we have a meeting and we're talking about teamwork, I bring up that story. So, yeah, thank you. How often do you guys have management trainings? Uh, we do that. We... We have management meetings once a week. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's every Tuesday that we have these these meetings, and I mean that's when we kind of all come together and we just make sure that everyone's on the same page and helping out each other. And you guys, that's where you guys go beyond the lines, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, Juno, I want to ask you about success. How how do you define success? Uh, for me. Success, you know, a, a lot of times people look at how much money you have or properties or whatever it is. For me, I feel like success is all about being happy. Um, so, you know, I, if I'm not happy, then I'm not being successful in my life. So definitely happiness is a key thing for me. Now, you have extremely high standards for yourself. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, sometimes it's, I mean, <laughs> I mean it, it could be a bad thing. Yeah. Like, for instance, you know, I, I see a therapist um, and my therapist tells me, you know, stop reading books. You know, and, <laughs> um, you know I, I read this thing online that an average CEO reads like 50 books or whatnot uh, a month or so. I, I forgot what the, what the statistic was, but I was like, wow, I got to start reading books. So I started reading all these books and um, my therapist told me, slow down, because for me, you know, every time I read these books and I learn something new on, on how to run my business or something about personal growth, um, I feel like I fall more and more behind. You know, every time I don't implement some of these things that I've learned, you know, I'm just like, wow, like I'm not being the best person. I'm not being the best, best version of myself or I'm not being the best CEO. So, you know, my, my therapist sometimes tells me, slow down a bit. You know, you don't, you don't need to read all these books, you know, and... Um, yeah. So, so why why do you have a therapist? I mean, what what issues? Um, yeah. Um, are you dealing with? So in what was it? 2009, 2010. Um, I was diagnosed as being depressed. Um, I had major anxiety. I was on antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication, and um, we don't really know exactly where the cause of it started. Uh, but you know, it it, it was somewhere having to do with uh, me being involved with my parents' business. Um, you know, this was a couple years after I graduated college, started working for my parents full time. And me and my parents were, were just arguing nonstop. We were butting heads. And, you know, I wasn't sure if I was happy with what I was doing in my life. And, you know, I just, it, it, it just all kind of came crashing down. And, um, so I decided to seek help. I started seeing a therapist. Uh, you know, he put me on all the medication. And during that, the, the, the peak of things, um, you know, I wasn't able to get out of bed. You know, my anxiety was really bad. And I remember my therapist telling me, along with these medications that I'm taking, um, I need to do something beyond that. Um, so he told me, every day, I need you to get out of the house at least once a day and just walk around the block, get some fresh air, get some sunlight. And he told me that it was going to help with my anxiety. Um, so I did so. And every day I would do this walk. And um, growing up, so I, w I wasn't the best kid growing up. You know, I, I dabbled <laughs> in graffiti here and there. And um, so every time I would go on this walk, I'm like, instead of just walking around aimlessly, I'm going to do something. So I created this stencil of an outlet, like a regular electrical outlet. Okay. And I thought it would just be funny if you're walking down the street and you see this 
spray painted electrical outlet on the side <laughs> of the road. Um, but that eventually evolved into um, being a sticker. So I thought it was less of a crime if it was a sticker rather than spray paint, because you could easily just peel that off. Um, but yeah, so I started putting up these stickers everywhere. And that slowly became a thing where um, people started finding out that it was me responsible for putting up all these outlets everywhere. And um, they started asking for one. And yeah, I, I mean, I slowly realized that it was becoming a thing where, you know, every time I gave a sticker to somebody, they would put it on their outlet. And for me, putting up these stickers was my outlet to my life, right? It helped me with my depression and my anxiety. So I created this company called My Outlet. And Perfect. the tagline is, what's your outlet? And uh, for me, it was a lifestyle company where it just told the stories of people and what their outlet to life is. Um, so when I, when I separated from my parents' business, um, this was in 2010, um, yeah, I didn't want to argue with my parents anymore, you know, and ultimately this was their business. So who was I to tell them, this is how you should run your business? So I told my parents, I want to preserve the relationship between mother and father and, and I mean, father and son and mother and son, and I'm going to go do my own thing. So I moved to New York, started that company, and... Um, that was your outlet. Yeah, that was my outlet. Now, did you have any suicidal situations during that time? Uh, I... You know, suicide thoughts always ran through my head. Wow. Uh, I never took any action, but um, it was always there. You know, I always thought about, you know, like it would just be easier if I just wasn't alive. Mm. Um, but I never really did anything. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> that's deep, Juno. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know, maybe it was because of my outlet, right? With putting up these stickers. Um, saved you. Yeah, pretty much it saved me. So. Yeah, for me, I wanted to really, with that outlet company, I really wanted to just um, break the stigma with, with, with depression and, and anxiety, you know, and, and just let people know that it's okay to be depressed, it's okay to, to have anxiety, you know, just make sure that you have an outlet, that you're doing something that you love. So that's why when you ask me the question about success, you know, happiness is, is for me, the number one measure of success. Wow, that's, yeah. thank you for sharing that. You know, that's very personal. Mm -hmm. Um, Juno, what's been your greatest obstacle in achieving your success, and how did you overcome it? You know, my greatest obstacle was um, just figuring out the things that make me happy. Um, you know, growing up, there was a lot of pressure put on me. Um, I'm the only boy in my whole entire generation. Uh, my parents would always tell me, you have to marry a Korean, nice <laughs> Korean girl. You have to take over the family business. You have to do all these things. And there was a lot of expectation put on me. And growing up, I never really knew what was things that I actually wanted to do. You know, like I, did, I had a hard time differentiating what I truly wanted to do versus what my family was wanted me to do. Um, yeah. Wow, that's that's great insights, Juno. Juno, I want to thank you for taking time to be on Beyond the Lines today and for really sharing, you know, the professional side of the business things and as well as the personal side, Juno. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, Juno. Yeah. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit my website, RustyKomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. A special thank you to Iolani Sportswear for my awesome shirt. I hope that this show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.